Welcome back everyone. We are going to take a look at generators in this module and what they are and we're going to create our own generators so you get a feel for them. The best way is to look at some examples. Why for instance use generators and what their advantages are over lists. Let's take a look at a list first because we have been using lists and we know what lists are. I have this function square which takes a list as a parameter or, or uh, which I'm calling nums here and I have this empty list called result and I'm going to loop through <clears throat> from i in nums and append the square of these numbers to this empty list and then return the uh, the newly created list with the squares in it so if I say my numbers is equal to squares uh, one two three four five a list of uh, numbers and then print the my numbers right here because I'm calling this square function right here I'm going to get back a list of squares let's do this via a generator so I'm gonna define the same square functions but nums in this case uh, uh, it is a list that's being passed but instead of returning a list I'm going to say yield I squared and yield creates a generator if I do this and then print my numbers, remember here I got the list back with the values. Here I'm going to get a generator object. It says it's a generator object. This is because the generator returns an object and unlike a list, it does not compute and store the results in memory. If I want to get these computed values, I have to use the next method or else loop over the generator. So I can say next my numbers and it's going to return one. If I say next my numbers, it's going to return four because it's square of two and then nine. And if I, I can loop, I can say for num in my numbers, which is my generator object, and it returns the next two, which is 16 and 25. So a generator is an iterator, and you may recall from the previous lesson on iterators that iterators can only move forward. So that's what we got. Let's use a list comprehension. Let me put a list comprehension right here. As you may recall, it's a very convenient way of creating uh, a list. I can say I squared for I in this list, and that's my numbers. And if I print my numbers, as you expect, you get a list back. To make this a generator, all I have to do is remove the square brackets and put in round brackets. And this is going to return a generator object. And as before, I can use the next method to say next my numbers. Remember, my numbers is now a generator object. And it works the same exact way. Let's take a look at creating this my numbers generator object one more time and print it again to make sure that I have my generator object. Suppose I have a generator object like I do here and I want to convert it to a list. To do that is very simple. I just prefix it with the list converter or method if you will so here's a generator object i'm going to call the list i'm going to pass it as a as a parameter to the list method uh, built-in method and um, i can just print that and it's going to print my list it's that easy because generators do not return the values immediately they are not memory hungry and values are popped as they are needed I have a little program here uh, uh, that I've written to uh, help us uh, do a comparison. Before we do that, we need to install the memory profiler library. Um, if you're in Jupyter Notebook like I am, you can do exclamation point pip install memory profiler. Pip is the Python installer program. If you're doing this from the command line or terminal, uh, don't put an exclamation point. Just put in pip install a memory profile. It should work. So mine is going to show that this has already been satisfied. Requirements are already satisfied. Yours, if it's your first time, is going to go through and install it. Shouldn't take too long. I'm going to import the memory profiler, the random library, the time library. I have two lists here, a list of names and a list of majors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, two uh, objects a list object and a generator object and um, create uh, a million of these things in a, in a list and a million of these things as part of the generator and then compare the time it takes to uh, do it for a list versus a generator first and foremost memory before uh, and this is going to be a placeholder I'm going to call the memory profilers memory usage method and uh, call the format method to basically put the value in here now here's the character list which is going to get a number of characters down below as you can see I'm passing a million 
an empty list and I'm going to go from, you know, uh, I in range uh, a million in this case, uh, I'm going to create these dictionary uh, objects, which are going to have an ID, ID of I name is going to pick a random name from here and a random major from here and append this dictionary object to my result, to my empty list and then return that list. For the generator, I do the same thing, except I'll just simply say yield character. That's all I'm doing. So it's still creating all these, but it's going to return a generator object. Let's take a look at comparing these things together. So what I want to do is I want to um, go through this. And um, first and foremost, I'm going to make some small changes. You know what? I have... Uh, two of these let me, let me remove this right here and I'll just because I, I had done it differently before but uh, this is the same thing except I have my memory before and over here I have uh, four lists I see t1 is time that performance counter get the number of characters by calling character list passing a million and then see the time the performance counter afterwards let's take a look at list statistics the memory after and the time it took. Then I have a bit of a break here, and then for generators, I do the same thing. I'm still passing in a million. Uh, you can do these underscores if it makes it easier for you to see the numbers. You can't put commas, but you can't put underscores. And you can see that the the, um, the the time it took that I'm using here is simply the difference between T2 and T1. Let's do this right here. And I can see the memory before was 76. For the list, the memory after was 299. For the generator, the memory after was 96. Consider how much less memory the generator is lose, using. Granted, the list has all the values in memory, but it is using memory. Also notice it took 0.43 seconds uh, for this to run on my computers. Yours will probably be a higher value, which is fine. But notice for the generator, it only took 0 0.02 seconds. This is an order of magnitude or two larger than what the generator did. Sure, with the list, we get everything in memory, but that is coming at the cost of having to use all that memory. With the generator, I can go through and just call next character. And I get, you know, Daffy for this, you know, the first one. And next one is apparently Charlie being a math major. And Pete also being a math major, etc. There are a million of these if we could go through. Uh, so this hopefully shows you how much more, uh, you know, how much less memory hungry generators are, which was the whole idea behind this exercise. Well, that's it for uh, generators. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're really enjoying these videos, please do share them with loved ones and friends. And thanks for being a great audience as always. I'll see you in the next video.